Hi guys, welcome back or welcome to DreamWorks Switch to Life. And for today's video, we are going to be reviewing another installment from the Kung Fu Panda franchise in preparation for the upcoming Kung Fu Panda 4, that of course being Kung Fu Panda Secrets of the Furious 5. While this is technically just a minor 23 minute short film, I feel like it's still a really great story to be told, or rather stories, because it's really trying to tell six separate stories in the space of just 23 minutes. Now, sadly, that might make this thing feel a bit rushed, but let's be honest, this movie doesn't really need to be a full-on movie, and each story doesn't need to be its own separate thing. It can easily be summarized in just the 23 minutes. Now, let's talk about the animation. I felt like the animation wasn't as good as it was in the original movie, at least in the 3D segments, but when it came to the 2D segments, you know, where it looked like Chinese paintings, I loved that, actually. It was really great because at the end of the day, it's just trying to tell stories, not actual flashbacks, because... There were dialogue in the flashbacks that you could tell was made up by Poe. Not if I defeat you now with the awe-inspiring awesomeness of my poison fang technique. There's also the music, and I felt like the music just wasn't really there. It wasn't as good as it was in the original film, and honestly, I'm pretty sure it just, like the music didn't exist, which is kind of unfortunate. I mean, there was definitely music in the background, but it just wasn't good or ear-catching, I guess you could say. And then, of course, there is also the voice acting for this film, and I felt like the voice acting was done really great. They got most of the actors from the movies to come back to portray their respective characters, with the exception of three. Tigress and Viper, they were replaced due to the fact that their characters in the stories were kids, so it makes sense why they wouldn't hire the A-list actors to come back to portray them. However, one actor who was missing that I felt needed to be there was Seth Rogen's Mantis. Mantis was really good. I felt like they had a good voice for him, but it just, it wasn't Seth Rogen, which is kind of sad, but you know, at the same time, it, at least it still sounded like Mantis, so there's that. So, of course, there's the main story where Poe is teaching five stories about the Furious Five to a bunch of kids. It makes sense why that part wouldn't take 23 minutes, but then we get to the actual stories themselves, which includes Master Mantis learning the art of patience, Master Viper learning to gain courage, Master Crane learning to gain confidence, Master Tigress learning control, and Master Monkey learning to gain compassion. All of these are great lessons in Kung Fu, and it really showcases that Kung Fu is not about fighting. Kung Fu means excellence of self, being the best you can be. That is an overarching theme of the entire franchise. It's great that over the course of its many spin-offs, sequels, TV shows, the franchise never once loses its message. It's about betterment of self. It's about what Kung Fu does for you. Not the fighting techniques, the virtues of Kung Fu. Now, I would recommend you guys go watch this movie, but at the time of recording this, I can't think of a good way to watch this aside from renting it online or something or purchasing the DVD, one of the two. But honestly, the only reason this movie is worth watching is because of two reasons. One, it showcases what Kung Fu really is about, and more importantly, two, it tells us a bit about the Furious Five, their characters, their emotions, their backstory, and things that we just don't get in the movies. It's all really nice. And I just thought that this was a really good way to showcase the backstories of the Furious Five, starting with the first story, Mantis. So Mantis is a pretty small warrior, but he's still really good. He just has one problem in that he doesn't really have a lot of patience. He's always rushing into battle, and one of these days it gets him in trouble, and he's captured by a bunch of croc bandits, which 
at the time, he f is forced to learn the art of patience, and he finally uses it to escape the Croc Bandits. I felt like it was a pretty good story, but I do wish that we could have gotten a story where Mantis actually learned how to use his size in Kung Fu instead of just making this a story. In fact, I'm not even sure most of these sh stories are actually canon because they're just being told to a bunch of kids so that they can be lessons. So while I'm sure that maybe this actually could have happened to Mantis, I felt like the story was a little bit lessony. The next story that we have is Master Viper. She ended up being born a snake with no venom, and because of it, she had no defense mechanism, and this forced her father to become the only protector for the village, and unfortunately, when facing against a metal opponent, he accidentally breaks his teeth. In order to save her father, Viper rushes into battle using her ribbon dancing skills because over time, trying to make her father happy, she ended up becoming the best ribbon dancer in the world. <laughs> At least that's what she said. Yes, definitely better than Mei Mei from Kung Fu Panda 3. Now, of course, Viper was a little bit scared over the fact that she didn't actually have any skills in terms of venom, but she still had her ribbon dancing skills, which she used to make it so that she ended up using her opponent's size and strengths against themselves, which was really smart of her, and it really helped her build her courage. But at the same time, I just, I didn't really get the impression that she was scared or angry anything over her story it just she just kind of went from being a s underappreciated snake to a snake having courage not really a scared little snake to a snake having courage it just didn't really make sense and then, of course, there's Crane's story, which I absolutely loved. So Crane was the janitor at a kung fu school, and while he always dreamed of being able to do kung fu, he never thought he could actually do it because he just doesn't have the body for it. And then, out of nowhere, he stumbles into the training course, and despite his janitor's skills, he ended up secretly learning Kung Fu to the point where he was the only one able to complete the training course and get into the school for Kung Fu, which was really good, and it really helped him build his confidence, which I felt like was a really great story to be told here. I just loved how it portrayed Crane in this short. And then, of course, there's the story of Tigress, and this one is actually very emotional. So, Tigress was born an orphan at the Baogu Orphanage, and she was deemed a monster simply because she couldn't control her strength, and she had claws, fangs, you know, the things that would make people afraid. And in the end, it's up to Master Shifu to teach her to control her strength. And while he does, and she ends up learning ways that she can actually play nice with a bunch of kids, she ended up being adopted by Master Shifu because the adults were still afraid of her. But despite that, she ended up forming a real bond with Shifu. Unfortunately, it's just kind of disappointing that Shifu never returns this affection. So, Tigress sees Shifu as her father, but Shifu just keeps trying to see Tigress as just a student because in Tigress, he ends up seeing Tai Lung. And that's really sad, but at the same time, it's kind of expected. And I just... It's really great to see the story of how Tigress ended up being adopted by Shifu, but it's still somewhat sad. And finally, there's the last story with Monkey. Monkey was a bit of a prankster, and he tried to cause mischief everywhere he went. And of course, the villagers weren't happy with this, so they tried to make him leave, and they hired people to make him leave before stumbling across Master Ugwe, who decided that instead of making Monkey leave, he simply needed to be taught a lesson in compassion. 
And that is exactly what Master Ugwe did. Once Monkey was taught to have compassion for those around him, he ended up becoming a force for good. I felt like this was a really great story and a really good portrayal for Monkey, and it's really cool to see just how much there is for Kung Fu in terms of having compassion for the people that you protect. That's a really key part of what makes Kung Fu good. You can use Kung Fu for evil, but just like Monkey, you can also use Kung Fu to have compassion for others and use it to protect the people around you. And that is a really great lesson right there. So it's really great that we get to see this history of the Furious Five, but I feel like even more important is the lessons that this short film is trying to tell. Because after all, this is Poe teaching a class. And it's really great to see just how far he's come in his kung fu training to the point where he can teach a bunch of kids lessons in kung fu. Not just fighting skills, but lessons in how to improve yourself. And that's really great because kung fu is not about fighting. It's about excellence of self and improving your personality and, of course, improving the lives of those around you. That is what makes Kung Fu so great and powerful. So there you have it. That's my review for Secrets of the Furious Five. It's a really short story or stories that tell a bunch of lessons in what it really means to be in the art of Kung Fu. And of course, there's also a bunch of character development going on, not just for the Furious Five, but also for Poe as he learns the best way to be a teacher to these kids. And that's really great, especially because of what happens in the later sequels, where he needs to be a teacher for everyone around him. This film is definitely worth watching, so if you feel like it, go rent it, or wait for it to come to a streaming service, like Netflix or Peacock, one of the two. However, it's also included on the as an extra feature alongside a couple other Kung Fu Panda short films, including Secrets of the Masters and Secrets of the Scroll, on the Kung Fu Panda trilogy Blu-ray and digital releases. So with that in mind, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and make sure that you like and subscribe so you can keep up to date on all things DreamWorks. And above all else, make sure that you're staying safe out there, and I will see you all in my next video. But until then, bye-bye. You saved me. Why? Mm, monkey. <laughs> you win. I will leave. Monkey. Thank you, Master. Mm, monkey. <laughs>